All right, here on Ched TV, newly launched, Dan Tenser, Bob Stoffer, two guys with a face for radio, but forced to do a little internet here. Uh, Friday the 24th of February, Bob's just wrapped up with Oilers. Now I'm preparing to do Inside Sports tonight. Bob, the major news, of course, on the ice, Ryan Nugent Hopkins returns for the Oilers tomorrow. Magnus PRV's fine. Nikolai Habi Bulin's getting there. But the major news off the ice as we approach Monday's trade deadline. Alex Shemsky and his future with the Oilers. You know, and I said today, Dan, on uh, Oilers Now, I said for me, to, you know, it's time to basically draw a line in the sand with Alex and decide, all right, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, some agents would tell Alex he has to test free agency. That's how this process works. Uh, I think that some of Alex's teammates really appreciate him being around. I think that the perception out there among some that he's not a popular guy in the dressing room is a complete myth. I mean, I'm around that team on a day-to-day -day basis. I know how the veteran players feel, how the, how the younger players feel. This is a talented guy that, uh, since the lockout, has put up you know, top 10 numbers on the right side, point per game. So that's a difficult player to replace. But in my mind, I'd offer Hemsky a two-year deal and say $5 million bucks and say this is what it is. And if that's not good enough, then you'd start perhaps looking at trade options. And there will be lots of teams interested. It's picking up on that front. Uh, it goes without saying, including a couple surprising teams that maybe people didn't originally think of. So the orders are going to have some options here, as too will Elish. Absolutely, and it certainly sounds like that two-year deal is on the table. It sounds actually like Alish Hemsky is warming to the idea right. of the two-year deal. So we'll wait and see there. Uh, the thing for the Oilers to consider is if you end up moving Alish Hemsky, you've got to consider what you get back for him, and you've also got to consider replacing him. And if you can get Hemsky to warm to the two- or three-year deal, that's pretty appealing because though you'd save yourself some money, you don't necessarily need it anytime soon. And to find a guy to do what Alish Hemsky does, you've talked a lot about the points per game, be difficult. Well, and the other thing it does, I mean, if, if you had, say, Taylor Hall with Gagne and Hemsky, you could play Everlay with Nugent Hopkins and find somebody to play the left wing. If I were to, you know, as it, it, let's put it this way, if Hemsky, if the Oilers can't work, get a deal done with Hemsky, I might look for a different type of right winger, a, a physically bigger, stronger, heavier right winger. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to get a guy like that, he's going to have some warts. So keep that in mind. Uh, you, you can trade for that. Uh, you're not going to be able to draft for that right away. Uh, and I don't think that the orders are necessarily limited to just Hemsky. I think that uh, the emergence of Jeff Petrie might provide them with an option on defense, and the orders again could address some shortcomings on defense in, in the offseason. The orders are in a really good position here. They don't have to do anything. They can do something, and I think it's going to be a pretty interesting next 72 hours. Bob Stoffer, Oilers now weekdays noon to 2. Dan Tenser, weeknights inside sports 6 to 9, both a part of the Oilers Radio Network broadcast team. And here with Ched TV, all the Oilers coverage over at 630Ched.com slash Oilers.